Welcome to the Get Fit Guys, quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Ben Greenfield and I'm the Get Fit Guy. In the episode, what is the best workout for fat loss, which I'll link to in the show notes for this episode, you learn how to optimize your workout for weight loss. But what if your goals are more sports specific and less focused on aesthetics? Can the best workout for fat loss also help you become a better athlete? While any form of exercise could potentially improve your sports performance, you actually would need to change your workouts if you want to optimize your body's ability to move with more strength, speed, and power, and go above and beyond something like fat loss. So in today's episode, you'll get the best workout to become a better athlete and top exercise tips to improve your sports performance. So before we learn about how to become a better athlete, you need to know why sports specificity in your workout is important if you do want to do something like move better or get better at your sport. When strength and conditioning coaches are evaluating how to design a workout that improves sports performance, we begin by simply watching the sport and asking important questions such as, number one, how long is the average play or the length of time you're exercising? For example, the average play length in American football is 6 to 7 seconds long, while the average play length in basketball is 13 to 15 seconds. And the exercise time during the 100-meter dash is 10 seconds, while the exercise time during the 1,500-meter run could be 5 to 8 minutes. Different time lengths will use different energy systems in the body, such as fast-twitch muscle and carbohydrate, or slow-twitch muscle and fats, or some combination of both. Number two, how long are the rest periods between those times? So using the same examples I just described, a football player gets 25 to 35 seconds of active rest between plays, while a basketball player is constantly jogging or shuffling between explosive movements for 5 to 15 minutes. A 100-meter sprinter may only perform one set during a race, but must have muscular conditioning to perform 10 to 15 sets during practice. A 1,500-meter runner may only perform one extended effort during a competition or practice, but must have a large amount of core and single leg stability for the repeated impact during that long run. And finally, number three, what muscles are being used? For example, a football player uses a relatively large amount of upper body pushing muscles, while a basketball player relies on hamstrings, glutes, and calves for jumping. Swimmers might use their upper backs more. Runners use their feet, calves, and hips. Tennis players use the shoulders, internal and external rotators, and so on. You don't want to necessarily use the same workout for each of those sports, but you should instead choose a workout that is sport-specific to the muscles or the energy systems being used. So what exercises should you actually use for a sports-specific workout? Well, once you know the energy systems and the muscles that you want to target, you can create a workout that meets those specific demands. There are a variety of different movements that all sports use, but the most common movements that can be replicated in a gym or exercise setting include the following, which I'm about to describe. Now, in the interest of time, I'll include more complete descriptions of each of these movements in the show notes over at quickanddirtytips.com, along with sample exercises for each movement. But the basic movements are jumps, where your feet leave the ground and jump into the air, such as a rebound in basketball, slams, where you might throw something down towards the ground very hard, like a tennis serve where the racket is coming down towards the ground, twists, in which you'd turn the body side to side, such as a baseball swing, throws, where you'd throw an object overhand, like an inbound throw in soccer, tosses, which would be propelling an object underhand, such as a softball pitch, Lifts, in which you'd lift an object from the ground, like a log throw in the Highlander games. Changes of direction, such as faking or cutting in football. Double leg strength, in which you'd push with both legs, like a rugby scrum. Single leg strength, in which you'd push with one leg, like running, hiking, or a basketball play-up where you're leaving with one foot. Vertical pulling, in which you pull from overhead, like rock climbing, gymnastics, or swimming. Horizontal pulling, which would be pulling towards the midline of your body, like uh, rowing or crew. Vertical pushing, where you'd push overhead, like swimming or throwing. Horizontal pushing, in which you'd push in front of your body, like blocking on the line in football. Core flexing, in which you're flexing your abs, like following through after that tennis serve. And then work, in which you're moving your body, running, sprinting, rowing, cycling, etc. 
So now that you know those basic movements, what is the best workout to become a better athlete? Well, you can put all of these movements together to create a good workout that will help you become a better athlete no matter which sport you're in. And while creating a specific workout for every single sport is beyond the scope of this single episode, you can guarantee that you'll be able to perform quite proficiently in just about any sport on the face of the planet if you can include each of the movements that I just described in a few workouts a week. For example, for a full body, three times per week workout using the exercises I just described, you could do something like the following. Begin with a 5-10 to minute dynamic warm-up, and if you don't know what a dynamic warm-up is, then check out the article, What is the Best Way to Warm Up? I'll link to it in the show notes, and it goes way above and beyond just reaching and touching your toes and then reaching for the sky. Number two, move on to three to four sets of six to ten reps for each of the following movements. And if you're time crunched, you could do these as a circuit, or you could rest for 60 seconds to two minutes after each exercise if you want to lift heavier weights and have a bit more time. Here are the movements. Vertical pulling, like doing a pull-up. Vertical pushing, such as an overhead press with the barbell. Horizontal pulling, like the seated row with the cables. Horizontal pushing, such as an incline bench press. Double or single leg strength, like a squat or a single leg squat. And then finally, a lift, such as a deadlift. Once you've gone through those exercises, you would then move on to three to four sets of six to ten reps of any or all of the following exercises. Again, performed as a circuit if you're time crunched or with some recovery after each exercise if you've got a little more time to spare. Slams, such as medicine ball slams. Throws, like medicine ball throws. Tosses, like medicine ball underhand throws and jumps, such as double leg jumps up onto a box. And then finally, you can finish with three sets of 12 to 15 reps of a core movement, such as twists, like cable torso twists, combined with core flexion, like hanging leg raises. Now, on a separate time of day, or on your non-lifting, non-gym workout day, do your moving exercises, which is also known as conditioning. And this would include treadmill or cycling intervals, rowing, swimming, sprint repeats, etc. Preferably with the time length and the rest intervals that are close to what you'll experience while playing your sport. Now, I know I just went through a lot, so you'll want to visit the show notes if you want to perhaps print this off and take it to the gym with you. And of course, you can also leave questions over at facebook.com slash getfitguy. As you can imagine, a workout to improve sports performance is a bit more complex than a fat loss workout, but when implemented properly, it can not only help you run faster, jump higher, and push harder, but also keep you from getting injured. In addition, the number of sets and reps that you perform at any given time of year may also change depending on whether you're in the off-season, the competition phase, or the race season, etc. And you can learn more about that in my two-part article series that I wrote, called How to Train Like an Olympian. I'll link to those in the show notes as well. As I mentioned, if you have more questions about how to become a better athlete, questions about how to do any of these exercises, or perhaps your own top exercise tips to improve your sports performance, then post them in the comments for this episode or join the conversation at facebook.com slash getfitguy. Until next time, I'm Ben Greenfield, the Get Fit Guy, asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Thank you.